South Africa's African National Congress leader, Cyril Ramaphosa, has declared a new era under his leadership. On the sidelines of the World Economic Forum at Davos, Ramaphosa threw the doors of South Africa open to all. Many say his declaration reflects the party's desire to win back the trust of investors and convince voters ahead of next year's election that, is, that his administration can boost the economy. Ramaphosa has also vowed to fight corruption and make South Africa great again. Meanwhile, the South African National Assembly is considering grounds on which to impeach President Jacob Zuma. Two options were put on the table, either to sack the president on grounds of serious misconduct, a serious violation of constitution or incapacity. The parliament has been tasked to drop draft rules to govern the removal of a certain president in terms of Section 89 of the Constitution. The Economic Freedom Fighters is sticking to its proposal for an impeachment panel made up of three to five retired judges, saying this will afford the president a fair trial and prevent the African National Congress using its majority to block the process. The committee is set to meet again next week. Channel TV South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Dibia joins us for more on this. Betty, so Cyril Ramaphosa says that his country is entering a new era under his leadership. Is this a sign that Jacob Zuma's days as president are numbered? Yeah, well, uh, the new era, they entered into that new era when uh, he was elected as the leader of the party in December and not being exactly the candidate of the sitting president uh, of the party. So um, I only say expectations are quite high. Expectations are spiked with a lot of pressure from the citizens, from the opposition, and even within the party, so that the party, you know, there will be general elections um, next year. So the party won't be harmed. But I, uh, uh, from the body language of the party, we see that they're trying very hard to, to handle it very carefully. Either find a way to get him out to, to, to leave office gracefully, or you know, do what the people are asking for, uh, but in such a way as not to harm the party in the, you know, during the election. Now, talking about the party now, like you just mentioned, there have been calls made within the National Executive Committee during their meetings for Zuma to leave office before his term ends. Do you in any way see this happening? Um, first, I'll say the, the, the NEC can they, they, they're empowered to recall the president, you know, according to the laws of the party, they can. But the question is, will they? I know during that NEC meeting, the, the post-NEC briefing by uh, the Secretary General, Isma Hashile, who is in trouble already over the state capture issue, um, he said they were seized with the matter, but it wasn't um, on, on the agenda as well. So it is, will they do it? Can they do it? They can. But will they do it or when will they do it is what the question, you know, a source for a lot of speculation at the moment. But so while we we'll wait to see if there'll be any answers to the question any moment from now, just yesterday, members of parliament had a lengthy debate on the impeachment of the president. Are there grounds on which he can actually be impeached? Of course, there are grounds. I know that the debate has to do, is it, in line with the instructions of the Constitutional Court recently, the ruling that said they had to put in, you know, look through their processes because the Constitutional Court can order the parliament to, to remove the president. But they can make them look into their rules to find the best way to, to or, or make provisions for that to happen. So um, it, it's, um, how do I put it? It, it, he, there are grounds, especially at the time that the Constitutional Court, uh, uh, the Chief Justice said, you know, he had um, got against his oath of office. He, he had done things, the, the issue of the Nkanda, the, all the corruption scandals and everything. So there are grounds, definitely. Will he be impeached? It, it, it's it's going to be a very long year if he's going to last up to the end of this year. It's going to be a very long year uh, 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 filled with a lot of stress for him. But well, we have our eyes on that and we'll see how it plays out in the coming days. Channel TV South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Dibia. Now the story is now with a sad one as at least 26 people have been killed in a landmine explosion that blew up a civilian passenger vehicle 
in central Mali. The vehicle had crossed the volatile border with neighboring Burkina Faso, where militants loyal to Islamic State are known to operate when it ran over the mine. In the past three years, Islamic groups that had long been destabilizing the thinly populated desert north of Mali have swept south into its wetter, more populated central regions, exploiting local conflicts to spread jihad. Italian graduate student Giulio Reggiani, whose mutilated body was found in Cairo two years ago, was killed because of his research on Egypt's independent trade unions. A Rome prosecutor, Giuseppe Pengaton, made this revelation after a detailed investigation into the incident. According to reports, Reggiani was under Egyptian police surveillance until he disappeared, but no one has been accused of committing the crime. Egyptian officials have denied any involvement in his murder, but admits he was being monitored. The 28-year-old student was researching for a Cambridge University doctorate when he disappeared on January the 25th, 2016. His body was found dumped by a road near Cairo nine days later. And elsewhere, a group of European tourists have been kidnapped or attacked in Senegal's southern region of Casamance. Security officials say the group of four were robbed and the three women among them sexually assaulted. It's not clear who carried out the attack near the Gambian border, but earlier this month, 13 young men were killed in the most deadly incident in the region for several years. Casamance, which is cut off from the capital Dakar by the Gambia, used to be one of Senegal's main tourist regions, but the industry collapsed there because of a decade-long separatist rebellion. Medical charity Doctors Without Borders say the deadliest cholera outbreak to hit the Democratic Republic of Congo in 20 years has reached the capital, Kinshasa. The charity says it has treated 157 people within a week of starting its response to the outbreak, one of whom has since died. The charity now fears the outbreak will spread like wildfire in a city which lacks good access to clean drinking water and has bad sanitation. Last year, it killed 1,190 people in the DRC, infecting another 55,000. Still to come on the program, Africa Tech takes a look at the use of artificial intelligence. You stay with us. <laughs> 